So whether you are brand new to the Instant Pot, you're afraid of it and it's collecting dust on your shelf, or you just need more things to cook. Today I'm gonna show you the top five things you need to make in your Instant Pot. Number one, is chicken. Now we're not making chicken first because I have nine chickens living in my garage. We're making it first because it's one of the easiest things to make. So today I'll be making all the recipes in my Instant Pot six quart duo. Now whether you cook one frozen chicken breast or seven or eight frozen chicken breasts, you will cook them for the same amount of time. So I'm just going to dump three frozen chicken breasts into the bottom of the Instant Pot. Now in order for the Instant Pot to pressurize, you need anywhere from a half a cup to a full cup of water. So we're just gonna pour that right on top of the chicken. Now it's time to put the lid on. As you're turning, you wanna make sure that you hear, at least, there we go. You hear the little jingle. Now some of the older Instant Pots have a little knob that says sealing or venting. If you have one of those, make sure it's on sealing. If you don't, this one isn't a sealing or venting knob. You just leave it as it is. Now, there is a meat stew button, but to be honest, that's just setting a timer. So I always go to pressure cook. Now, I cook my frozen chicken for 25 minutes because I want it to be cooked all the way through. So you're gonna set it for 25, pushing the plus or minus buttons. There are some Instant Pots where you have to push start, but this one, I can just walk away. When the Instant Pot is done cooking, lots of times, depending on your Instant Pot, an L will appear and the timer will then start counting up. That's how long it's been done cooking. So this just beeps, so we're gonna go ahead and release the pressure. And it doesn't even seem to. <laughs> okay, when all the pressure's out, that's when you can open the lid and you have Cooked chicken all the way through. So much easier than boiling it. Now that you've made frozen chicken, it's really easy to throw in a few more things and make dinner with your frozen chicken. So the second thing I'm teaching you is four ingredient chicken tacos. First, I'm gonna start with a half a cup of water in the bottom of your Instant Pot. Next, I'm gonna throw in my chicken and I threw in about five or six frozen chicken breasts. You can use thawed too if you'd like. Next, we're adding one tablespoon of chili powder and then we're gonna add one tablespoon of cumin. And that is it. Just those four ingredients, throw everything in, put the lid on, make sure that the little knob is turned to sealing, not venting, you want it to cook. And you're gonna push pressure cook or the manual button. And because mine is frozen, I'm gonna go up to like 24, 25 minutes, but if it's thawed, you could do about 20 and you'd be good. Now after you set the timer, it's gonna say on. That means you did it right. So go ahead and walk away, you're good to go. So when it was all done, I let it release on its own. So after the timer beeped, I let it sit there for about 10 minutes. And then I turned the knob for the rest of the pressure to get out. So now that my chicken is all the way done, you can shred it either in your pot or you can take the chicken out and shred it there. It kind of depends on how I feel for the day. Sometimes it's easier to pull it out and shred it up. Now, once it's all shredded, it's time to make the tacos. So I'm gonna make three right here and just show you how I do it and what I like on it. Now this tacos, make sure you drain out the chicken pretty well or it will become juicy, as you can see in my middle one. So I love to add corn with it, salad, sour cream, tomatoes, avocado, salsa, literally anything you want on your tacos will be delicious with these shredded chicken tacos. But these ones are for my kids, that's why there's just a little bit of ingredients, ingredients that I know they will eat and I am happy to say that they ate them all and even went back for seconds. Number three is pasta. Now I hated making pasta on the stove top because it always boiled over because I was doing too much. In the Instant Pot, you put the pasta in, you cook it, you don't even have to think about it because it's not gonna boil over, it's so easy. Now the size doesn't matter either, whether it's elbow macaroni, ziti pasta, or even spaghetti noodles. It will all cook for four minutes. Now here's my trick with pasta. You can cook as much or as little as you want. I'm gonna dump the whole box in. Now to know how much liquid you need to put in there, you're going to fill it all the way until every noodle is covered with liquid. All the noodles are covered with water. You're gonna go ahead and put your lid on. Now if you have a little knob that says sealing and venting, you wanna make sure it's on sealing. This one doesn't have it. Some of the Instant Pots don't have that. Now, as you know, I love to cook everything with pressure cook because these other buttons, lots of them, it's just a timer. So we're gonna push pressure cook and like I said before, pasta, we're just cooking for four minutes. So with this Instant Pot, I just have to go to four and then I can walk away. Some you have to push start. So whatever one you have, 
There you go, hopefully that helps. All right, when it's all done, I push this button to release all of the pressure. Now, if you do release it, and there's tons of foamy stuff coming out, go ahead and put it back to venting or flip that little knob and it will let it release on its own still. We just don't want explosions all over your kitchen. Once all the pressure's out, you can lift the lid up and the pasta is cooked perfectly. Now that you know how to make pasta, let's turn that pasta into some dinner. So number four is creamy mac and cheese. Now my noodle of choice today is small shell noodles. So you just need one pound of noodles. Then you're gonna put them in the bottom of your Instant Pot. You're gonna take your pot and fill it just until the noodles are covered with water. Next, go ahead and put your lid on. Make sure it's sealed correctly. Now if you have a knob, you wanna turn it to sealing, not venting. Next, you'll push manual or pressure cook button and go to four minutes. Now after a few seconds, it will say on. That means you're good, you can walk away. Now after the four minutes, you can turn the knob to release it, but just beware with pasta, sometimes it makes a giant mess. So you can turn it back and forth, releasing the pressure slowly. Once all the pressure's out, go ahead and lift the lid up and your pasta should be done. Now I didn't need to drain any water because there was no water left to drain. So go ahead and mix up your noodles before you add the other ingredients. So first I'm gonna add about eight tablespoons of butter. I like to use salted butter, that's my favorite in macaroni and cheese. Next, you're gonna add about a half a cup of milk. Now we're gonna add a little bit more, but right now we're just gonna add half a cup. Then we're gonna add two cups of sharp cheddar white cheese. Did you hear that? Sharp cheddar cheese, it is amazing. And then about a half a cup to a cup of shredded Parmesan. So now it's time to just mix everything in. So slowly, gently mix it in. Now it'd be easier to push the saute button just to get it warm or warmer on the bottom to melt your butter faster and to melt your cheese faster. Now because it is really cheesy, you wanna make sure to add just a little bit more liquid just so you can make it creamy, not so chunky cheesy. So I added a half a cup more of milk. Then you're just gonna continue mixing until all of your butter is melted and all of your cheese is mixed together. Now you can add just a little bit of salt and pepper. I just like to add salt in my mac and cheese and then go ahead and mix that in as well. Now when you're all done, your cheese should be nice and creamy. This is how we like it. Now when I serve it, I also like to add just a little bit of Parmesan cheese on top. And there you have it. Now number five, I'm gonna show you how to cook a roast. But as I'm doing it, we're gonna make open-faced beef sandwiches. This is one of my husband's favorite meals. Okay, so for this recipe, obviously you need a roast, but then you need some beef broth, some Worcestershire sauce, some seasoning, so we have garlic powder, onion powder, and then some salt and pepper. Two packets of brown gravy, and then I like to use sourdough for my base, so you just want a big slice of bread for the bottom. All right, so my roast is kind of huge, so I actually just put it in, in here without showing you. It's totally frozen, so you're supposed to season your roast. If it's frozen, it doesn't season very well. So I'm just gonna add the seasoning into the bottom of the pot. So we're just gonna, it's kind of these seasonings are to taste. So I'll do about a teaspoon of each one. So we have about a teaspoon of salt, about a teaspoon or so of pepper, and I'm trying to get it on the roast. We'll see how this goes. About a teaspoon of some garlic powder, and about a teaspoon of onion powder. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is just add about a cup and a half of beef broth into a little extra bowl or something, because we want to mix these all together before we put it in our roast. So then we're gonna add both packets of our brown gravy, and then one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire sauce, whatever you call it, that's what it is. One tablespoon of that. And we're gonna mix this all together. Now, if you seasoned your roast, which I'm kind of seasoned, you wanna put your gravy on the side. You don't want to cover it cover up your roast because we want to leave those seasonings or as much as we can on the roast. Now I forgot to mention this is a rump roast with a bone in, but really any type of beef roast will work for cooking it low and slow. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on. Now if you have a little knob that goes from sealing to venting, make sure it's on sealing. Now this Instant Pot's a little bit different. My pressure cooks over here. And so we're actually gonna go for about an hour and 30 minutes. You know, I could even go higher if I wanted to, just because we want it to just sit in here for as long as we can. Now with this one, I actually have to push start and we are good to go. All right, many hours later, I actually let it sit in here for about five more hours once the timer went off. 
And then I actually already opened it up and shredded all the beef. So we are ready to go. Okay, so I have our sourdough ready to go. I like to have a little bit of vegetables and I wanted some mashed potatoes with it. So we're just gonna go ahead, take out the meat, and just put it right onto the sourdough. Now, you can easily make some beef gravy out of this. Just add a little bit of cornstarch and water, but I am out of time. So I'm actually just gonna take this and just put it right onto my bread. The bread might be a little bit soggy, but that's okay. And then I'm also gonna need to add some of this broth onto my potatoes. Now, if you want more Instant Pot recipes, I have hundreds for you. You can find some of my favorites right up there. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.